This is an RMA fishbowl inventory tutorial by Brando Consulting, inventory software expert since 2006. Let's check out how to return inventory in fishbowl inventory. So first of all, the RMA screen is found under the sales category right here. RMA stands for Return Merchant Authorization. The key word in this is authorization. Otherwise, we could just go to the sales order screen and return it. If you want to track the reasons why people are returning things, then the RMA screen will help you do that. So keep track of the reasons why and also issue an authorization for the return. So as other screens are designed, we go to the top left hand corner, click New, and select the customer that is returning the inventory. And then notice there's an expiration date for the offer. The expiration date is the date that the customer, um, the date that you're telling the customer is their deadline to get it back to you. Otherwise, the deal's off. So we could give them a month to return it. Fishbowl tracks an RMA number and the location group it's returned to. And then, of course, we want to add over here on the right hand side, click the little green plus sign to add a product that they're going to return. Looks a little bit different than other screens returns so we'll select the product that they're going to return and here's where we verify whether or not they've purchased it from us before in the past so it says verify by order or do not verify let's verify by order we click next and lo and behold we get this blank screen that means that this customer has never purchased this product from us before so let me give you another example of a customer who has actually purchased a product from us before. <clears throat> okay, so for this second example is a customer who has actually purchased product from us before. Bell River Road. We'll give them a few weeks to get it back to us. We'll click the green plus sign on the right and type in a product they've actually purchased from us before. Click Next. And here we have two different orders that they have purchase this item from us before. So I'll check the order that they're returning it from, click next, and the quantity that they're returning, type that in. And then here we come up with more options. These are options on the RMA screen that are not on the sales order screen. We've got credit, replacement, substitution, and repair. <clears throat> so credit just means we're gonna give them their money back. Uh, replacement, means we're going to give them the exact same part number and give them a new item. Substitution means we're going to give them a different part number back. And this is all assuming that they're going to actually return the item. Okay, We can still use the RMA screen to our benefit if they're not returning the item. Let's click replacement. That's the most popular one. And then issue is the reason. That's what that is. It's the reason why they're returning it. Now these two fields right here are custom fields. I'm now on the custom field screen. I click on custom list and select RMA issue. Look at that. You have control over the list. Click next and we can add to it. Here you can enter in the most popular reasons why your customers are returning your inventory. Those options aren't found on the sales order screen. One more reason to use the RMA. Okay, we're back on the screen we were previously on. And now if I clicked on the issue drop down, you'll see I have a new option because I just added it to the custom fields list. Now you can do the same thing. Customize the list of reasons why people are returning their items. And then we can add notes. Now you can also run a report later on to show what your most common reasons people are returning their items. Okay, so so far we haven't done a whole lot except for record the reason they're returning it and verify that they have actually purchased it from us before. So notice like other screens up in the top left hand corner there's no issue button. We're used to having an issued button so this kind of throws us off a little bit. The button in the RMA screen is return. Click the return button. Prior to clicking the return button, this RMA was just an idea. Now we're going to actually authorize the return. 
Click Next. This is the dollar amount that was on the previous sales order. Here we can add a return fee, either by percentage or flat rate. We can call this a restocking fee as well if you'd like. Now this little checkbox is nice. Cross ship replacement products. If I check that box, it will put this item on the same sales order twice. One to ship out and two to return back in. Notice right here it says credit return sales order. In this little wizard, we are creating a sales order. If we don't check this box, it will create two sales orders, one to ship out and one to receive in. I like keeping them both on the same sales order. Now we click finish. In that step, a sales order was created. If I click email, we can compose an email to the customer with an attached return merchant authorization. And this is what it looks like. This is the document that they should include with the part that they're returning to you. The receivers will then know what to do with the item because this document will reference an order on the receiving screen. This little tab down below is noteworthy. Let's look at that. There are two sales orders on this tab. One, the new one we just created, and one is the previous one the item is being returned from. I'm going to click on this link to go to the sales order we just created from this RMA. Here we see our restocking fee. Ooh, I charged them a lot. I must have fat fingered something and clicked something wrong. <clears throat> we have the replacement item, and we have the item being returned with a negative value. And here we see the types of sales this RMA created. Now we see the prices that they will be received in and shipped at, but we don't see the costs. The cost that will be received and shipped depends on what costing method you're on. This particular file I'm using is on the average costing method. You may be on FIFO or standard. Okay, we're back on the sales order screen. Notice the sales order status is already issued. We didn't do that. Just clicking the return button and going through the RMA wizard did that for us automatically. So from here, this sales order will show up in two screens. It will show up in the picking screen and will show up in the receiving screen. The sales order will show up in picking for someone to pick it, pack it, and ship it to the customer. It also shows up on the receiving screen. Notice it says SO, it does not say RMA. And it has the sales order number, it does not have the RMA number. We can search the order by the RMA number by using the advanced search button. Here we see there's an RMA number under the advanced search. Type the number, click OK, and it'll bring us to the sales order number. So the sales order number has a different number than the RMA. And here we have the item to receive. You may think if we receive this, I just received it, and then pick, pack, and ship this, pick, pack, and ship, and refresh, <clears throat> that the RMA status would become fulfilled, but it's not. The status on the RMA is still open. You can set a setting for RMA to automatically be fulfilled. Under Tools, Module Options, under the Resolution tab, we see a Resolve Credit Items on Receive, meaning once you receive it, the RMA is received. The reason this setting is an option only is because RMAs resolve money, which happens in QuickBooks. You may not want to mark this RMA as resolved until you have actually given the customer money in QuickBooks. If you choose to manually resolve RMAs, then do it here in this drop-down, Resolved, and then click Save in the top left-hand corner, and now your RMA is fulfilled. If you have any questions, please comment below. To see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe.